to me it kind of seems like there might be some sort of really sketchy predatory business models that are exploiting scholastic systems that aren't really invested in student success at all. Yikes. <laughs> hey y'all, welcome to Woke STEM, a digital space made to intersect social justice and STEM while uniquely centering people of color. Now you could probably name all kinds of reasons as to why diversity in STEM is a struggle by city and graduate programs. But have you actually considered that the GRE, yes, the GRE, the test that we all gotta take to get into graduate school, actually functions as a deeply structural and institutionalized barrier for diversifying STEM? Not on my watch. Not on my watch! Today we're gonna get really, really deep with the who, the what, the when, the where, the why, and the how with special guest Raquel Aragon. Raquel is a second year PhD student here at UCLA. She's a student activist and she's an executive board member of the UCLA Association for Multi-Ethnic Bioscientist Advancement. Y'all, we about to get this hot, hot tea today. Like, scalding hot. But before you burn your gums, Make sure that you subscribe to our channel and subscribe to our mailing list at wokestem.com. If you do both of these, you'll be the very, very first to get all of the updates about what Wokestem is doing and all of the dope stuff we have coming up in the future. You don't want to miss it. So for those of you who are in graduate programs right now, if you look around, you can probably see that a very tiny percentage of people of color make up your actual cohort. This is a problem, and we all know this. I mean, I was like pretty much the only black person in my graduate class. Like, come on, like, get it together. What's going on, homegirl? Good morning. And I am not your homegirl. Girl, you are hilarious. Your hair looks so good. Did it grow? So Raquel, how does the GRE actually get in the way of diversifying STEM programs? So most people think of success in grad school as things like number of publications that you get, how many years you spend in grad school, number of patents you get, etc. There are actually a number of recent studies from the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, and Vanderbilt University that show that GRE scores are actually not correlated with success in grad school at all. Really? Yeah. Funny enough, the only thing that correlated with first year GPA was the quality of the letters of recommendation. Those university studies are saying that the GRE scores are pretty much irrelevant? The GRE scores seem to be completely irrelevant. So there's a study that came out in 2014 that was looking at GRE scores across genders and different racial and ethnic groups from 1980s all the way until 2007. And what the authors found was that when they looked at the quantitative scores, or the math scores, that women scored 70 to 80 points lower than men. And even more alarmingly, that Black and Latinx test takers scored 100 to 200 points lower than their white and Asian counterparts. The fact that the GRE score is a better indicator of who you are, such as your racial background, your Ooh. gendered identity, Ooh. then how you actually do what your success is in grad school is a huge equity issue. Like, this test could actually be a gatekeeper. I mean, it clearly sounds like a huge gatekeeper for keeping people of color and other people from minoritized groups out of STEM higher education. Yeah. Wow. Getting into graduate school is really, really hard. It's, it's not easy at all. So most people have to apply to many, many schools in order to increase the odds of getting in. So you get four free scores to send to schools, but after that, it's $27 per school. It'd be like four dinners for an undergrad. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh, like, it under $27 was like, okay, I, I'm good for like a, a week or two. Like, that's the, like, $27 as an undergrad, like, as a broke undergrad, working in labs and stuff, like, yeah. Bro, 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 five bro, we ain't got it. Bro, 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 five bro, we... Now the fact that 
the GRE exam only allows for you to send four scores for free and every other school after that you have to pay for, it creates a really, really, really tight bottleneck for those people who can't afford to pay $27 per school. Some people are actually limited to only applying to four schools, but that's all they can afford. So it's like basically if you have the coin and then you can increase your odds of going to grad school, which is just... It's all messed up, like that's not proper access to higher education. I've heard students say that they wouldn't have been able to actually take the exam if it weren't for their undergraduate fellowship programs like LSAT or McNair. These are undergraduate honors programs that pay students to do research and offer them resources. For me, that was literally the only way I was able to take the GRE and get the test prep because these programs provided the resources for me. But at the same time, it was on a reimbursement type basis. So there's just, there's all kind of layers that create barriers for getting into STEM graduate programs. For a lot of people, it's really, really difficult. It's not that easy. And they have to jump through way too many hoops that might not be possible for them to do so. So I think the whole system is all backwards jacked up and just honestly needs to go. Like, it, girl, you gotta go. Like. <laughs> So if the GRE is irrelevant, like completely irrelevant, why do these companies that are behind administering and creating these tests even make it a thing? To me, it kind of seems like there might be some sort of really sketchy predatory business models that are exploiting scholastic systems that aren't really invested in student success at all. I hope that people who are watching this can thumbs up this video if you found anything in this inspiring, motivating, or just plain dope. And we'll see you next time. Bye!